Today we're going to be tying a gurgler fly. I'm going to call it the river rat. It's a big one. And it's upside down, hook pointing up. The secret to making this fly ride with hook pointing up is you have to make this front dam area rather large and what happens if it does land this way it rolls tested it extensively and too short of a head here it'll stay upside down so you have to make this big enough the hook I have in the vise is a U-Fring fishing hook I got these off of Amazon these are big 45 degree 4 rot jig hooks and the foam I'm using is this 5 millimeter foam it's pretty big thick foam just perfect for this project first we're going to start off by adding some thread Stanville 210 just go ahead and wrap it all the way back once you start it on there Cut away your tag in. Right back to the top of the bed of the hook here. And back up just about a half an inch or so. First we're going to add in some of these hackle feathers I got from a cape that I have. It's a uh, streamer cape. Got from Sideline Hill Hack, uh, Hackle Company. Strip all the fluff off it. So you have basically a nice little tail. Lay it right up against the side of the hook here. And go ahead and wrap it in. Take your matching pair here, strip it, on the opposite side of the hook. I have to make sure I got them pretty close in length there. Go ahead, tie it in. Tie it back. Tie it back up a little bit. Bend these over. That way they won't come out on you. It'll be nice and secure. You go ahead and cut them away. So now you got a nice little long rat's tail here. Gonna add a little bulk to it by adding these shorter ones. Shorter hackle uh, feathers I got from the same saddle. With the side of bow's end facing inward. Lay the stem right up against the side of the hook. Give it a couple wraps. And the same with the matching feather. When you pick these off the cape or off the saddle, pick two that are next to each other. You'll get uh, similar feathers most of the time. And matching it up. Do the same thing. Give it a couple wraps here. Try not to hit the point of the hook like I just did there. Pull these back. 
wrap over them. Don't worry about it if you're building up a little bulk. You won't hurt this fly at all. Cut away the uh, extra stem there. Next material we're going to add is this pink bucktail. On the bottom here, just take a little pinch. Just, uh, what do I got here? Ten. Ten strands, maybe. Cut them away. Take all the short ones out of the bottom there. And you're going to have a couple extra long ones. You don't need those. So now I'm down to what? Uh, that might be a dozen in there. Just lay it right on top of the hook shank. You don't want this to be very long. Just about half the shank of the hook behind the fly. Lay it right on top. You want this to ride right on top of this hook shank because this is going to be the bottom. This is what the fish are going to see. Wrap it in, cut away the excess, and now we're going to add a little bit of this crystal flash, which actually it's a nice little pink color, about the same length as that bucktail, maybe a little longer, wouldn't hurt it. Lay it right on top. Wrap it in. Cut away your excess. And now we're going to add 20 pound monofilament. We're going to use this to attach any dropper to it. Being this is going to ride upside down, you want a place to attach a dropper. And what I've been doing is attaching a small streamer, like a size 12. Give the uh, fish something extra to look at. Now this is a big bass fly we're tying here, so you'll be uh, chasing those small smallies too. Tie one side into one side of the hook. Just bend it over like that. Give it a couple wraps. Just tie it backwards. Like that. And now this is important. You want to bend this over. But if you don't, you catch a big fish on your dropper, that's going to pull out of there. If you secure it in, like what we're doing here, the odds are that it won't. So now that we have it all secured, cut away your excess. Get a little place to hang your dropper. What I normally do is just uh, attach a loop to loop right there. Alright, go ahead and uh, add some thread to your hook here. Give it a nice little base. When we attach the foam, you don't want it sliding around on you, so you want something to adhere to. And that will be the thread base here. These uh, river rats, I guess we'll call them, float very nicely. Very, very nicely. They right themselves, should they lay an upside down. On the first little twitch, they flop back over. And it has a lot to do with the head of the fly. Okay, now that we have a nice little thread base for it uh, here too, 
take your piece of foam. Foam has to be at least one shank, two shanks, and a half. Or it'll be too short here and the ability to flip over won't be as great. So take your scissors and go ahead and cut a little point on one side. About like that. It'll work nicely. With the point touching the bend of the hook. Come back to where the bend of the hook is here. The point touching the front of the hook. And that's how long you want it to be. So take your foam and jam it up under the vise there. Touching the bend of the hook. Nice and firm. Everything's all measured out. That's just touching the eye of the hook, touching the bend of the hook. Take your let's get that a little bit better back in there. Here we go. I can't. Take your foam right in the middle. Of it, go ahead and stick it right. In, stick your point of the hook right into it. All you're doing is basically getting that out of the way. Just going to hold it up there so you can work with the rest of this here. Pull your foam up. Take a little super glue. Hit that thread. Alright, take that, jam it right in there. Pinching it down while holding it. Start wrapping her in. One wrap, jump back, two wraps each time. Just jump back a little bit, and that's why you're using a Danville 210. Nice and hardy thread there. You can flip your fly, fly upside down. Do the same thing. You want to secure this as much as you can. You don't want it to turn on you. And once that super glue sets up, it uh, it's nice and secure. Okay, work your way back. When you get to the front here, give it a couple more extra turns in there. Okay, how you want it, just like that. There you go. Now we're going to add this yarn bee product. It's called eyelash yarn. It's very directional. You can see that the fibers flow either toward the front, flip it over, now they're flowing to the back. You want these flowing toward the rear. So, lay it right against the foam here. And wrap it in. Just wrapping it back. You need to flip everything around here. Again, you could do that. Oh, yep, I got it caught on. 
off somewhere. There we go. You want to make sure it's good and secure. Just get all the way back here. There you go. I take my bobbin holder, bobbin rest, I guess you can call it. Set my bobbin up out of the way. And we're going to add a body. Just by spinning this yarn bee eyelash material. Make sure you got a lot on there. Cover up real nicely here. Nice and thick. Stuff's cheap. If you don't know that Hobby Lobby always has 30% off sales. And there you go. Nice and thick. Still focus on hitting everything here. Take your bobbin rest. Throw it out of the way. You want to secure this eyelash yarn. Don't be shy on using this thread here. You don't want things coming apart on you. Good cut away. If you want to now, just trim this up too. That way it's not getting in your way when you're trying to finish up the fly here. Alright, just give us a, uh, a few more wraps here. I'm going to have to build up a thread base here. I'll show you why in a second. There you go. Alright, flip your fly over. Pop out your yarn, or your yarn, pop out your foam, stretch it up, I have to make sure it's all this stuff's floating, flowing back here, when I do this, Pinch it down and put a lot of thread pressure on it. Pinch it. Now you want to build up a nice little dam. If I can get down in there. Turn this around here. behind the foam here. Voila. That's how your fly is going to look. You got a little hole in the back from sticking that in there, but hey, if I don't care, or if you don't care, I don't care. How's that so? Now we're going to add some legs to it. Legs we're using are the silly legs. In brown. I have black. Maybe I should have used black, but brown looks pretty good on this fly. Take one silly leg, double it over. Take the double over side. Set it right against the side of the fly there. Go ahead and wrap it right in. Just one wrap for now. We'll give it actually two wraps here. 
try not to capture any of the uh, other materials and now we're going to do the same on the other side bend it over match them up there lay it right against the side this vise holds up to a supposedly a 6 aught hook so this 4 aught does pretty well holds a uh, 30 I think it says a 32 how's how they advertise it a 32 to a 6 aught and that can attest you to you that it does hold a 4 aught alright just work it in there you want to wrap these in real nice Without trying to capture all that other black material there. Alright. Do another wrap. Another wrap. And that should be good. Bring your thread up front. A few wraps. Go ahead and give it a whip finish. Right behind the eye. Oops. Give one more here. Cut away your thread. And let's trim up a little bit of this extra stuff. Well, let's just get it out of the way here because we're going to glue it in there. I don't want to have take your silly legs, cut them. Got two short ones in the front, two long ones are going to flow backwards. Good. Take some Sally Hansons. Flip the fly back over. Coat that up real good. Don't need it coming apart on you. Take a little dab you want to coat this thread in behind the foam here like that there you have it cut yourself a little actually a big gurgler fly upside down hook when that bass is grabbing it, he's just going to devour it, so you're not going to miss him. Good looking fly though, huh? If you want, you got, uh, this is pretty long here, this eyelash material. What I've been doing right here is just on the very end, just trim it up a little bit. This will all flow backwards. There you have it. You got a river rat. Nice tail. It follows behind it. it. Gives it a little wiggle as it swims. What do you think about that? Alright, if you like these videos, give me a nice little subscribe button hit. And a like button. Give me a comment. Tell me what you like about it, what you don't like about it. I'm going to add the materials list to the video. But the uh, it's all common materials. Five millimeter foam is the big thing on this. It's, it's big and fat. Big fat. Don't sink fly with the mono loop here to attach your dropper. If you want to attach a little small streamer, size 12, 14 or so, you'll catch a smallmouth with them. I caught plenty of big ones. In fact, biggest smallmouth I ever caught, 22 inches, was on a size 14 
Wooly Bugger. And there you go. Alright, I hope you like it. I'll see you next time. Stay tuned for more. See ya. Bye.